Okay. We're almost, uh, we've got about two minutes left, so we'll just give uh, some other folks to join us, and then we'll get started. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Last day of the summit, so we'll get started. Uh, my name is Nithya Ruff and I'm with SanDisk and I'm also part of the Women of OpenStack. And uh, this panel was put together by the Women of OpenStack. Every summit, I'll, I'll go into the next slide. So every summit we've been putting a panel together on some topic related to inclusion and gender diversity. Uh, and fostering, you know, better um, inclusion in the community and increasing the, the number of uh, diverse candidates working in the community. So this year we thought of talking about um, a world, you know, a really vi envisioning a world where there is a truly and completely um, gender equality and blindness to people uh, from irrespective of where their gender, color, creed, culture is. So this panel is about vision, and it's about creating this vision of how we can get to that world. And what we did was we created a, a fantastic panel um, of people from across the industry who will talk about some specific ideas and areas where they have seen things work and where they've seen uh, creating inclusion work. Uh, and in, from an OpenStack perspective, it's extremely critical because we come from, f you know, s hundreds of countries, from hundreds of companies, thousands of contributors, 50,000 or more in the community. We have to work together in harmony in order to uh, move OpenStack forward. So this is an, a very important topic. Okay, having said that, uh, let me go to a couple of quotes uh, which are really uh, very inspirational to me in terms of what diversity means and why it's important. The first one is from Stephen Covey, and it says, strength lies in differences, not in similarities. It's differences that really strengthen us. Um, it brings different perspectives to the table. The second quote is, diversity and independence are important because the best collective decisions are the product of disagreement and contest, not consensus and compromise. Uh, and that's so true. Um, one of the biggest business values of diversity that I have seen is better decision making and better innovation. So with that, um, I will turn to my panel and ask them to introduce themselves and also tell me why they decided to join this panel. And a quick shout out to Beth Cohen from Verizon. Beth is the one who put this panel together and unfortunately couldn't be here, uh, but uh, we want to acknowledge her contribution and spirit here. Ruchi, what brings you here? Hi, so uh, I'm Ruchi Bhargav. I work for Intel. I've been uh, part of Intel for the last 25 years and done four diverse jobs. And the reason why I uh, think uh, I want to talk on this panel is when I first started working at Intel, I was probably one of the only women in my organization. I did factory automation. And I was not a person I made myself out to be. It's what they talk about, the imposter syndrome. I used to dress up in dockers and shirt uh, and Clark's shoes. 
just because everybody else in my team used to be dressing up like that. And I was not like that. And then I did that for like seven to eight years. And then uh, after I had my first daughter, and I said, this is how she's going to see me that this is warm and this is not what I'm really am. And even then it was very hard for me to go and change myself till I saw some good role models and who not only me women, but also men who basically uh, did not let the looks and you know how to be like everybody else that like like likes thing uh, affect them and that made me change and I started to make that as a mission of myself. I wanted to change myself and project what I really am be myself and I think that made me much more successful both at Intel and whatever I did. So that's why I want to be part of this panel. Thank you. Being authentic. So, yes, hi. First of all, I'm very honored to be asked to be a part of this panel. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. And my name is Vince Brunson. I work at IBM, been working at IBM for 23 years now. And I manage a, uh, a group of uh, OpenStack uh, contributors, uh, 17 in total, that contribute upstream because you're probably looking at me and saying why is this guy on a, on a diversity panel you know I wouldn't think of me necessarily as being a diverse person but it's what's interesting for me is uh, of the 17 people that I manage it's a very very diverse uh, group of people um, uh, you know from college new hires to people that have been with the company 25 30 years and uh, you know everything in between so you know we've got a lot of diversity and it's a challenge every day to manage uh, the the group of folks uh, just because I want to make sure that everybody's included brought together and and work together as a team so it's it's a very interesting and hopefully I can bring some of that and uh, help those others that are in the in the uh, crowd uh, managing a diverse team of folks and and maybe bring some insight from that perspective um, hi, I'm Nina Garagia. I'm also from IBM. Um, I'm, I'm from development. I'm an architect with the IBM Cloud team. Um, I've been with IBM about 18 years, and I think, um, like Ruchi, when I started off, um, very often I was the only woman in the room. Um, very often I was the only non-Caucasian, and more often than not, I was the only both, right? Um, and I've found that um, you tend to feel more comfortable with some teams than the others, and over time what I realized was that you're actually part of the team. And the longer you're part of the team, the more you're contributing to the team culture, that the team culture evolves. So actually, irrespective of your position on the team, you can actually influence how, it, how inclusive that team becomes. And I found that um, as, as I started growing in IBM, right, everyone brings their own, um, and a lot of times it's not conscious biases, but it's, all, you know, it's typically unconscious, right? You, you almost have, you know, you're, you're forming first impressions, judgments, and it's, it's really important that uh, you take a step back and see what is the impression you're giving, right? Because that's what's forming your team culture. And as I said, it's not dependent on the position you are, but it's the fact that you're on a team, and the longer you're on the team, the more you actually create and change the team culture. Josh. Hi, uh, Josh Kleinpeter with Cisco. Uh, I, I guess, used to manage an OpenStack cloud team uh, they all work for other people. Uh, <laughs> so I can't say, like Vince, I have a diverse team anymore. Um, I'm here because um, I guess in the last year, I don't know if any of you guys have followed Gamergate, um, there are a lot of really horrific things that people are doing to women in the tech community. Just absolutely horrific, and I can't believe these people feel like they can. And while I would hope and pray that nobody at this conference is involved and would do anything like that, I do think that the little things that we do and accept and allow to happen can kind of have a butterfly effect to the larger tech community. Um, and things get out of hand. When people are unchecked, they're sitting in their you know, room by themselves on a message board doing whatever the heck they want because they see, oh yeah, this, this cool person I like made you know, some cute remark or whatever, but that gets out of hand eventually. And I think if we can do things to stop those things and all become brave enough to stop the little things, then hopefully that helps the big things from going away. Absolutely. Josh, very well said, all of you. Um, just my personal story, um, 
like all of you, I started in tech uh, many, many moons ago. I won't even give you the numbers. <laughs> and um, I was also one of the few women uh, in my group. And uh, in fact, I, I felt so isolated uh, and uh, felt uh, incompetent because, uh, you know, I just felt that I was different than everybody else. And I decided to get out of coding uh, because of that. And then I ended up doing, you know, product management, product marketing, because I felt there were more numbers and, and I felt more comfortable um, in, in that kind of climate. And so we are driving uh, a lot of women and people who are just a few of them uh, away from tech because of that. Um, and so we do need to create a more inclusive environment, uh, something that values what each and every person brings to the table because both the business case as well as the social justice case is so powerful uh, to make sure that everybody uh, is, is fully contributing and fully engaged in what they're doing. Okay, so we came up as a team with a bunch of questions. Now if I can get the clicker to work. Okay, so it's going down is... Ah, there it is. And uh, my eyes are not as good as they used to be, so I'm going to um, take a look at the questions here. So what will this new world look like? I'm going to start with uh, the vision statement, right? What will this new world look like, and how will it differ from the current one? So what kind of a world do you guys think we should be in? Uh, so I'll turn to a couple of you. Nina, what do you think that perfect world or that unbiased world would look like? Where you can just be yourself and still be heard, be successful. Where you don't feel being different is a handicap. You know, where you... So everyone is valued for just what they bring. And then you won't look around and say, because you feel different, that's when you look around and say, am I the only woman here? Right? But if it's not an issue, then y even the fact that you think of it makes it an issue, even if no one else around you is conscious of it. Right? So when it, it that's, that kind of thinking goes away. That's when I think we'd be really successful because then everyone is just being themselves and that's what you really want because that's where you get your differences of opinion. You're not trying to think a certain way or behave a certain way. What do you think, Vince? Uh, what, what do you <coughs> wish, uh, envisage? Well, I, I agree with uh, Nina on that. You know, I think we need to focus on being ourselves and when you look at somebody uh, that you're working with that you know, you, you don't see the, the person so much for, you know, whether it's male, female, their, their race, creed, color, religion, whatever the case may be. You know, we're, we're all technologists and we're here about technology. And so, you know, getting down to that discussion of, you know, you can have a, a, a discussion with your peers where you really focus on the technologies and the ideas and the, the great things and then but we, I think at the same time, we need to keep all these things in mind that we are still all different, right? And because of our differences and because of our experiences bec that we have because of those differences, we bring that to the table, which makes the technology that we produce just that much better. And so, you know, that's the world I would like to see, and that's the world that I really work hard to try to foster in, the, in my team that I lead, is to make sure that everybody knows whether you're, you know, brand new to IBM or you've been here for years and years and years, Every, everybody's opinion is valuable and everybody's opinion has merit and lay it out on the table and have that discussion and, uh, and see what you come to. You guys brought up a really important point which is when you're authentic then you bring your true self to the table. You, you said that as well, Richie. And if uh, there is an inclusive leadership style in the company and in the team, then it really takes advantage of the uniqueness that you bring to the table, which then makes the end product better, uh, whatever that is, whether it's a uh, software or uh, something else. Um, so the next question I'll ask is, each of you as an individual, how do you think you can make sure that voices are heard in your team? And I'll really start with Josh. And, and how do we solve you know, something that you brought up? How can we make that butterfly effect happen, you know, with just ourselves? Can, can each of us make a difference? Um, I think yes. I mean, you know, I think in a lot of the teams I've worked on, and regardless of the makeup, there's always a person that's louder than everybody else. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and it can, and I'm sometimes that person. Um, 
and it could be really a challenge to rein them in and say, you know, hey, you know, and I, th I think, I think, you know, sp certainly as a manager, somebody in leadership, you know, helping to calm those people down and make sure that other people, you know, are able to talk. I mean, just in simple, like we're doing stand up and that person won't let anybody else, you know, do whatever they need to do. Um, I, th I think just simple stuff like that. Um, and, and I've actually seen that, um, you know, a lot on my teams, especially because we're very remote, lots of people on phones. Um, so it's very easy for the people in the room to take over conversations. Um, and so watching out for that. And I think another thing is, is uh, just prompting, right? And helping, you know, what do you think, right? You're quiet. How can I bring other people to the forefront and help them kind of come out and say their opinion? Um, because, you know, I think a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of people that I've worked with maybe have great ideas, but they're very shy kind of to themselves or whatever. And, you know, so bring them out and, you know, let them light up their ideas and that's useful. That's fabulous. Richie, what do you think? So, you know, uh, in addition to what Josh said, and I, I like to make sure, and I would encourage most of our, all of you are part of some team. Is it, is it working? So uh, all of us are part of teams which are working on accomplishing some things. And there has been research done that, uh, let's take the case of gender. You know, those leaders who have either daughters or sisters in their lives, uh, you know, have like one or two sisters or one or two daughters. Of course, everybody has a mother, but uh, you know, uh, we can't exist without that. So, but uh, <laughs> you know, as yet, but uh, uh, <laughs> right, who knows? Uh, and uh, uh, that's one thing men cannot do as yet. But uh, uh, there is, uh, going back to my point about uh, take those people in who have sisters or uh, daughters in their lives and put them in also make them part be part of your team you will see that they have a very different uh, opinion of uh, diversity mm -hmm. you know as opposed to like uh, intel has uh, you know I, like a lot of other companies has taken a big target on inclusion and diversity and it's not gender diversity it's diversity of all kinds but you will often find men uh, say, oh, why is there not uh, you know, eff similar effort for men or similar effort for white males? Or, and uh, it's a very hard question if you ask that to a woman who's being successful uh, just because on her own merit. How do you answer that question? You feel that y whatever you have accomplished is all lost at that point of time. So just make, sh uh, that is, you know, an, an ideal situation would be when that question is never asked of uh, anybody who's successful. That why uh, th was that opportunity not made available to me? Think about it. That opportunity which is available to the non-diverse folks today uh, has never been available to has never been made available to all the women, to all the uh, other people of s uh, different lifestyles mm -hmm. and uh, you know diversity of ra uh, race. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that. So uh, we should stop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things are just, and it will become, uh, at Intel, what we do is to bring them in, uh, we make that special, uh, that you have to have that opportunity. But once you are in, you are equal, mm -hmm. because you hire still the best. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think we should be headed towards. Uh, uh, really, really uh, good points. And I think what you guys are bringing up is that, um, you know, managers and leaders of today have to be inclusive managers. They, they have to work on that muscle of how to bust bias, how to include people, how to make uh, empower everybody on the team to work successfully and, and bring out the best uh, from a diverse team, you know, global teams, diverse teams, et cetera. So uh, my question to you is, you know, beyond, I, I really like the ideas that you brought up, Josh, which is everyday things you can do in meetings to you know prevent uh, people from getting lost or not being heard. How can managers foster a, a team environment and an inclusive environment? As a manager, what can you do? I mean, uh, Vince, you've been doing that. You said you have a diverse team at IBM. How do you do that? How do you make sure that 
this quiet person is valued just as much as that loud person, you know, who's uh, sometimes dominates Josh, meetings, yeah. <laughs> and and may feel that you know they're not being heard, or or that person who has a, a different lifestyle, or uh, you know, uh, one is a parent, one is uh, a young person right out of college with different priorities. How do you make everybody feel included and valued? Well, I think, you know, it's it, it can be difficult at times, honestly. You know, I mean, you have to, as a manager and a leader of a team, you have to balance the the needs of a business versus the, the needs of the people. So you have to do, you know, the best you can around that. But I, I think I try to set up with, in my team, I try to set up the mentorships with others in the team. And if they don't have a mentor that fits them in the team, I work within the company to try to find uh, folks, good, solid mentors that, are senior people within the company or within an open community like OpenStack or what have you to help them understand and learn as quickly as they can, right? And I try to work hard to to match those folks up with mentors that are, um, you know, uh, not necessarily, you know, if it's if it's a, a a female, I might try to match them up with a with a male, uh, uh, you know. But I, I do it very carefully to try to, you know, I want to make sure that they get the right mentorship, uh, or you know. However, I try to manage that, and and you know sometimes mentorships don't always work out. Sometimes they do. You have to be flexible in how you manage that as well, and and that's been really successful for me is is finding good solid mentors for the folks in the community, and you know it it teaches them that they can. It's okay to speak up. It's okay to be heard because they they have a good role model that they can then can follow. And sometimes it's even you know folks that have been with the company quite some time. You know you recognize that and you you help pull them out of their shell a little bit and and be heard and be included within the conversation. You're, you're also saying that as a manager, I cannot uh, always be the only person that they can turn to. Let's, let's open up the resources for them to work with lots of other styles and people uh, that they can yeah, be mentored. Absolutely. I mean, across IBM, as you can imagine, with nearly four, 400,000 employees, we have a lot of opportunity and a lot of diversity within within the company. And, and, you know, I'm very proud to work for a company like IBM that has often led the forefront of a lot of the social justice as well within, you know, with what they've done around hiring uh, women and, and minorities and, and promoting that within the company. So it makes it very easy within IBM, I think, to do that. Um, and Nina can probably speak to that even more than I can. But, uh, you know, our founder, Thomas Watson, was, you know, a big proponent of that. And, and so I think it's part of our, you know, part of our DNA a little bit that we, we look at that and, and we want to be at the forefront of a lot of what we do there. So as a manager, you know, I feel like in order to keep that, that going forward, I have to help along the way and, and make sure I continue to, to carry that legacy forward. Yep. Uh, Nina, as a technical leader, what have you been doing and, and how do you also foster teamwork in projects you work in in the open source community but also across you know, company to community? Right. So, um, so the, the thing is when you're working in a technical team, right, I mean, ultimately it's just the quality of ideas and the quality of work you do. But then it also boils, you know, comes back to Josh's point about, you know, who's the loudest, right? And I think um, when you're working in a team and uh, when you're leading a team, it's really important um, not to just listen to the loudest voices, right? You really have to listen for the best ideas. And the best ideas are not necessarily, especially when looking at a diverse global workforce like we have, right? Um, you have people in the room, you have people, you have people on the phone, you have people on IRC, right, even internally. And you have to make sure it's not just a loudest voice. Um, if, if the ideas are not necessarily phrased in the best language, I mean, not everyone has English as a first language. Um, and, and people sometimes are hesitant, right? It's not just because um, because you're a female, right? You, you just could be, you know, you, you could be a, a it, it depends on your personality type. You could just be a new hire who's come from a small town, who's, you know, getting used to the vastness of working with IBM, the vastness of working with the open source community, right? So making sure the voice is heard is extremely important. Um, sometimes, and, and, you know, this, this is, um, everyone's heard this example, right? You know, someone says something, the team ignores it, someone else louder and more confident says the same thing phrased differently and everyone jumps on it, then it's your role as a leader to step in and say, you know, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever B said was great. And you step in and say, yeah, absolutely, right? What A and B said were, were, were great, right? But you, but you acknowledge the contribution of the first person. Um, that's extremely important. Um, 
So th that, that's, that's almost your role, you know, to step in and make sure everyone's heard. And then once you start doing that, the others catch on. And whether that's, you know, on IRC, whether that's on the phone, whether that's in the room. So that's one thing you, you have to watch out for. And as I said, it's not just, you know, male, female, right? It's really personality types, right? Um, the, the second thing you have to do as, as um, to, because, you know, we had that really interesting session earlier, right? We were looking at statistics um, on contributions in the community. Um, you, you can look at your managers to, to feed the pipeline, right? They do the hiring. But once they come in, I feel retention and growth is, is, is my role as a technical leader to, to foster that in my team as well. Because if your team doesn't feel like they're growing, you're going to lose them. And you will see that in the community as well. You can say all you want, right? You have to come in and do the code reviews, right? Try and fix some bugs. But there's only so long that someone can do that, right? This is their career. Right? They need to have something to hang the hat on at the end of the day. Because that's when they feel you're trusting them to do something technically. You're, you're acknowledging what they bring to the table. So it's also your role to find that. Right? You, start off, you can start off small, but you need to give them something to work on. Because once they work on it and they do it successfully, that's when you can also then acknowledge it. Right? Because then that's when you feel you belong to the team. Because until you do that, you're never going to really feel validated as being part of the team. And that becomes really important. Absolutely. In fact, um, I think uh, one of the changes that I'm seeing in what a lot of our companies and the community is doing is taking a look at changing the environment and not just changing people. You know, in the old days, we used to always talk about fixing people. We'd say, oh, that person, you know, doesn't fit uh, the company profile or she talks too loud, or he's too quiet. And we try to fix people rather than fix the environment to be more uh, inclusive, uh, you know, to bring out the best in people. And, and frankly, it is those types of uh, team management techniques and inclusion that uh, creates a more empowered team. So I, I really applaud uh, some of the things you've said. I was going to pick up on what Josh said before about some of the harassment that happens online. And, uh, you know, we've heard it in uh, online communities in particular. How do you, um, clearly we need to have zero tolerance, but how do you, as especially powerful, as a man, as a peer, um, to kind of come in and say, hey, this is not kosher, <laughs> this is not correct, how, how do you, make a difference there and, and kind of change the, the climate of those online conversations. I'm putting some heavy burden <laughs> on you there. <laughs> um, on, online, I, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, it, like, just watching what people do, and it, it, it almost feels like helpless there, which is, which is why I think it's potentially easier for us to look at our own communities, right? And how do we, how do we help those? And, and honestly, it, in my experience, it's really straightforward and simple. I mean, you know, somebody says something that's, you know, maybe kind of funny or whatever that, you know, might be a little bit sexist or racist or whatever, and you just say, hey, dude, that's not cool. And as simple as that, and most people are like, yeah, you're right. I was just Call kidding on, around. On the and behavior. Just, and, yeah. and you don't have to be aggressive about it or yeah. like mean or anything. Yeah. You just say, you know, don't say that. Yeah. Uh, because and someone had needs to call them on it. And, and Intel has been talking about this. Uh, uh, you know, BK has been talking about yeah. online, yeah. Especially on that, uh, what, do, what did you call it, code? Gamergate. Yeah, Gamergate thing. BK went out on a limb and he yes. said, it's totally unacceptable. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it wasn't that, uh, and because uh, we had some ad or something, I, I, I don't know if anybody from Intel remembers what exactly happened, but we pulled out that ad and then we, you know, uh, it was uh, BK Behu's our CEO made a very, very explicit comment that this is not kosher and we are not going to support it as a technology company. And, and that makes a very valid point, which is um, as leaders in our projects and leaders in our companies and communities, we need to stand for it. Uh, we need to stand for zero tolerance, right? Because if we role model it, and if we say this is unacceptable, and we are vocal about it, then uh, people start backing off. Be nobody's called these guys on, on what they're doing. So sometimes that's what happens. 
Um, so, so what I'd like to do is, uh, you know, there's also another aspect that I'm seeing uh, to address some of this, which, uh, which is code of conduct, projects adopting code of conduct, but also enforcing the code of conduct, and not just, uh, you know, having uh, a piece of paper, but, you know, when these types of infractions happen, nobody really uh, enforces it. So, uh, uh, yes. Nadia, on this side, I, okay, it is on now. So I personally would like to ask everybody here, and you know, use that power to ask, so that all of you ask the rest of the people in the community who you work with, there is a code of conduct which exists for OpenStack and for the Linux communities. We have to enforce it, and if we take that l things lying down, if there is any harassment which you see, you have to call it out. Yes. Nobody should take it lying down. That's yeah. something which is very, very important. Because if you, you know, and if you see somebody, you know, it's also about being uh, an observer in a crime is, it makes you a criminal, yeah. so. Totally, thank you. That, that's a good call to action. Okay, um, this, this is uh, just really teasing out some more uh, examples of what have you done to make your team feel valued, Ruchi? You know, th is there an example or a story you can tell of how you recognized uh, someone's uniqueness and, and brought you know, their value to the table? So, you know, what often happens, it's not about gender, what I'm going to talk about, it is people's behaviors. So if there are people who are generally very quiet, they may be extremely diligent in what they do, and I have a very diverse staff. I mean, there are people from uh, three continents on it and very different uh, thought process. And uh, uh, th things which we learn in a uh, thing called my, uh, class called micro inequities, uh, when you do rotation, when you go out on uh, on a travel or vacation, make sure that you rotate coverage by everybody. You know, those things. Uh, and same thing happens in uh, if you're part of, say, a NOVA team. Make sure that uh, some sort of leadership opportunity is given to people of all backgrounds. Uh, and I, you know, I would like to now applaud the NOVA team because earlier it was everybody was, uh, uh, you know, of a particular background, maybe a particular corner of the United States where they all came from. And uh, now they've, uh, and it was called out. I actually went and spoke to people in the NOVA core team uh, and said, y do you realize that a lot of people are of the same background? And now they have people who are coming in from different uh, geographical backgrounds, uh, language, uh, you know, because in, uh, it's uh, one of the core projects of OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So try calling those things out if you see that, and because it will enable for things, different kind of things to get accepted into the uh, OpenStack uh, technical base. So try, uh, you know, that's how I think uh, we can make things happen. Anyone else have an example of uh, something they did uniquely to call out people? And it's, it's not so much an example. It's also to say that, y you know, if you feel uncomfortable, you should raise it, right? Because not everyone's, because sometimes just bringing awareness to it makes a big difference. Like Ruchi said, you know, you just talk to the Nova guys and say, hey, this is what I've noticed. That itself leads to change, right? So if you find that something's happened to you or someone you know, that has made, you know, you all uncomfortable, it, it, it's time to speak up, right? Because we can only address what we are aware of. And if there is not awareness, and that's when I think Things can fester and over time get bad. So I, I really think the early intervention is extremely important. So we, are, we have about 10 minutes left um, for the time. So I'd like to turn it over to the audience, see if anyone has questions. And if you do, could you kindly come to the mic? And we'll take the question from there. And then I'll share some resources on how to get involved in um, the OpenStack, uh, Women of OpenStack, as well as the Diversity Task Force at, uh, at uh, OpenStack. So does anyone have any questions? getting more contribution from outside, but there's also the, the people that you might already have on your team, so uh, things to do about retention. So that's a great question. Uh, we often forget about retention. You know, we just bring people in, and then frankly, we have a leaky bucket uh, problem in the industry, right? We lose people because we don't create an environment to value them. So any examples from the, uh, the group here? So, um, 
for for me personally, for my team, uh, I've got a, a large team of folks uh, all working on OpenStack, and I, I think it kind of goes back a little bit to the last question. I think from a retention standpoint, you know, it, it, it's all about feeling valued as a as a person, um, and there's many ways that you can help your team feel valued, or or you know, it might be something as simple as a as a simple thank you to someone and recognizing the accomplishment that they had, um, you know, whether that be in a private setting or at a team meeting or something of that nature. But then I think the other piece is too is that, that you know, we as, as leaders in technology have to realize that our teams are people too, right? These, these aren't people that just sit behind a, a, a computer and write code and, and that's all you do. You have families, you have things that you do outside of work. You have things that you are, you know, and, and all of us are different, so we celebrate different holidays, we celebrate different things of that nature, and I think you have to be respectful of all of those things as well and understanding as a, as a, as a leader to make sure that you manage that appropriately and help, you know, let, let your team know, let the people know that they're valued as a person, that you're not a resource. You're not an asset. You're not a field replaceable unit as a as a coder. You know, you're you're a person, and if your people are happy, they're going to stay around. I think there's been some studies done that you know the the top reason people leave a company or leave a particular position isn't because of the job. It's because of the leadership that they have. So I, I take that personally as a leader. That that to me is the biggest way that I can help make sure that I keep my people happy and uh, make sure that they're happy in the job that they're doing. You know, I think you have another question, but uh, just to add on to what you just said, uh, Vince, is everybody brings some strengths to the table. One of the tool sets which I uh, definitely like to use, and our company also uh, has made, probably made me aware of that, is uh, you l leverage a person's strength and go around their weaknesses. Forget about their weaknesses because every, you know, focus on the strength and that enables every individual to succeed. And everybody has some strength. So that's a bigger stool. Totally agree. Yes. Hello. Um, yeah, I have a question. I'm, I'm, I hear about this, a lot of talk about inclusion and, and it's, it's all great to have this conversation. However, it always comes back to a single topic and which typically revolves around uh, gender. So as a person, for example, with a disability, I don't see myself here included. So you talk about inclusion, but you're excluding a lot of people. And, and you know, I, I made this I, comment. Uh, yes. Say, right? so I, I, and go ahead, please. I, I, and, and I do understand there's this, 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 this notion of, yeah, we need to focus on something. I uh, do have another answer, too, so okay. I'll share that. Yeah. So th th this is absolutely correct. And, and uh, what you're bringing up, and I, I would like to also get your name, is uh, the bigger D and the bigger inclusion. So what I've discovered uh, since we talked yesterday is that there is a diversity task force with, the, uh, with OpenStack, by the way. It's not just uh, focused on gender diversity. And the diversity task force mission is to focus on the bigger D and building a big tent for all inclusion. And so I'd like to connect you with Kavit uh, Munshi, uh, who is part of that task force. Uh, and see how we can um, make sure to include some of the elements from, you know, disability, from lots of other uh, areas. Yeah, because I looked at the at the logs of the, the from the meetings, yes. right? And there's no they don't mention address that anything yeah. Yeah. like yeah. disability or race or anything. And yeah. as an ex IBMer, I yeah. know that there's some great stuff IBM can talk about That's in right. terms of inclusion, yeah. diversity and inclusion are different things, right? So, but. And frankly, our customers have the same challenges. 15% so of the gross population that. are disabled. So yeah. if you think about how many people you're missing out, plus also by just including people with disabilities. I tried on Monday to see if I'm deaf, yes. how can I participate here? And the answer was, I can't. Yeah. There is no accommodation, even though it's the law. And just by including people with disability, if you're a woman, you have the chance, and my, some might get offended of that, I get it, you have the chance to get a job. If you're people, a person with disability, you may not even get that chance of yeah. a job at all. Yeah. So bringing people with disability in, that would even mean much, much more. And I applaud you for um, speaking up and making sure that, you know, just like Ruchi did, yeah. making sure that that's not ignored and that's included. Um, so please provide me your name and, and sure we'll, will. we'll connect you to the right people. Yes. Because, uh, during the diversity group working session uh, yesterday, um, the why 
videos always only talk about women who came up, and we did bring up, you know, why do we not talk about uh, you know, race, religion, age? Yes. And I want to smack myself upside the head because you didn't bring up disability, but I want to thank you for adding that, and I'm sure there's other things we haven't thought of, and so if you would get involved, that would be fantastic, and if you could think of other things, um, bring it up. So Courtney, could you collect, c connect with him and include him in the diversity task force, please? Fantastic. Go ahead. Oh, Hello. The, the two of you, you two, right? <laughs> Aloha, Kako. Um, you talked a lot about what you do as managers with your direct reports. I think that sometimes we forget how important it is what comes down from the very top yes. as well. No matter how hard we work as direct managers, um, even if you're in a company with 250,000 people, what your CEO or your board of directors thinks and says matters a lot. Okay. Totally. Um, it sets the stage and culture. It does. Um, secondly, and, and I think that what I'm about to say may make some of us uncomfortable, but every morning when I get up, the, the note that I see on my computer says, get real, don't screw up, make good choices. The first part of that is get real. I think we all have to recognize the world that we live in. Um, and I think we are given big brains to make good choices, but there are, uh, but we're human beings and, and we do have biological instincts. I think when we see each other, that happens. I go to a gathering of really smart, intelligent n people and I often find, like a party, a social setting, and we segregate ourselves by sex. We segregate ourselves by race or origin. Yes. There is something, some biological imperative that's going on there. It is what it is in our genes, but we don't have to act on that in negative ways. We can use our brains to say, I'm not going to let my lizard brain make a comment or uh, do something inappropriate. And so when we say we want to live in an environment where we don't see those differences, I think that's a little bit of a fantasy. I think we have to say we're not going to act on those differences. We're right. not going to let those differences that we do inevitably see impact us in negative ways. Thank you. That, that's, that's so true. Um, one more question and then we will have to uh, cut it short, unfortunately. But we could take, uh, yeah. So statement more so than a question. So differences are important. No one wants to eat the same food every day. Yes. Right? Does anyone raise your hand if you want to eat the same food? See, so uh, my 11-year-old does. Maybe mac and cheese. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay, that's good. Go, go ahead. <laughs> so, so di difference in diversity is brings flavor to everything, yes. no matter what it is. Um, that said. I'd like to challenge everyone who's in this room to join the, the diversity work group. We were there yesterday, and there were only four people in the room. And one of the things that came up, or take it back, there were seven people in the room at most. Um, one of the things that came up is it's very difficult for anyone to really champion diversity if they, in some cases, they're not aware that there's a diversity issue. Um, and in many cases, it may be difficult to champion it if they're not in some way connected to the plight of those people who experience that disadvantage. Yep. So for those people who are in the room, I would challenge everyone here, number one, you need to become aware of diversity. Like when you get up, you know, and you're working your teams, think about that. You know, think about the fact that you interact with we, a... Sorry, we've run out of time, I'm but so can stop. you give us one quick thing? How do they join the diversity task force? Um, the they're going to be sending out an email. Okay. They're going to be sending out an a, a, a email blast and there's a wiki page for it. And they can tell you. Once okay. you tell them. Once Fantastic. Tell them. I, I know just where just Carol just is. Uh, <laughs> Carol, yeah. If you could tell us how to yeah, join please. the task force. And then on the screen are resources for joining the Women of OpenStack as well, as, as well as, you know, um, on IRC mailing list, et cetera. Go ahead. So there's a wiki page for the diversity work group. They send uh, out their communications on the foundation mail list. They'll use diversity tags, so subscribe to that. They have regular meetings that you'll be able to find out information about on the wiki page. Okay, fantastic. Guys, I, I'm just absolutely jazzed and excited that all of you joined us. Thank you so much, because 
we've, we've, the numbers have been growing every time. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for asking such great questions. I'm so sorry we couldn't get to all the questions. And thank you to the, the fantastic panel here for uh, making their voices heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thank you.